On Monday, June 22nd, after three long months, the New York Society Library reopened its doors. Although for the moment, they're only open wide enough for books to pass through. In the last 266 years, this was only the fourth time the library was closed. And in this rather special first week of reopening comes a very special event. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nikhil Iyengar, and I'm delighted to introduce a poetry reading by Willy Perdomo from his latest work, The Crazy Bunch, a winner of this year's New York City Book Awards. Willy Perdomo is the author of The Essential Hits of Shorty Bonbon, Smoking Lovely, and Where a Nickel Costs a Dime. He is a winner of the Penn Open Book Award, a finalist for the National Book Critics Circle Award, a winner of the International Latino Book Award, a finalist for the Poetry Society of America's Norma Farber First Book Award, a Pushcart Prize nominee, and a two times New York Foundation for the Arts Poetry Fellow. His work has appeared in the New York Times Magazine, Mandorla, and African Voices. The greatest works of art have a quality of dynamism about them, an ability to capture with striking effect the fluidity of time, motion, and possibilities. This element shines brightly in the sculptures of Bernini and the Parthenon marbles, and in those books where words leap off the page and drag us back in with them. The Crazy Bunch by Willy Perdomo is suffused with this alchemic quality and special power to transport you wholesale to another time and place, no teleport device or time machine required. This supremely creative, innovative and entertaining book is quite literary poetry in motion. So please sit back and enjoy and prepare to be whisked away. Hello, my name is Willie Perdomo, and today I'll be reading from The Crazy Bunch. Uh, the Crazy Bunch chronicles a weekend in the lives of five young black and Puerto Rican men uh, from East Harlem during uh, a summer weekend in the early 1990s. The first poem in the book is called In the Face of What You Remember. You remember that was the summer of up rock, quarter water speed, notch, pillow bags, two for five, Jesus pieces, and bamboo. The Willy Bobo was turned up to 10, and some would have said that a science was dropped on our summer. The summer that was lit with whispers of wild style, rock steady battles, and white party plates made all kinds of moons on the playground foam. The summer the burner was used to eat and mandate, inspired Sunday sermons, became a literary influence with humming climaxes, a bribable tail, a dub tied to a string, and squashing beef wasn't an option. The summer of fresh shrills and a future somersaulting off a monkey bar, a future placing bets that all us old heads, desperate to find a new cool, could not flip pure. That was the summer that our grills dropped to below freezing. Back then, Palo Viejo was thermal and therapy, bones were smoked in the cut, and you had to expect Jungle Gym Giggle to be accompanied by Buckshot. That was the summer Charlie Chase hijacked Megawatch from Rose's kitchenette, found gems in the milk crate, spun his one and twos below rims that still vibrated with undocumented double dunks. The same summer we became pundits and philosophers, poets and pushers that we all tried to fly, but only one of us succeeded. The summer that Papu turned up to extra status, the only one in the crew who had reduced fame's window by a fifth. When the camera panned his Kazal laced up rock in the rocks he seen of Beat Street. One could say we gave the block gasp and gossip, body and bag, a folktale worth its morphology. That was the season we had reason to rock capes and wings, chains and rings. Some of us flew higher than most and tricks were hardly ever pulled from a hat. All that and a bag of barbecue bontons was enough for at least one of us to say, I'm straight. Over the course of the weekend, these young men go to a few events. They go to a breakdance battle. They go to a triple feature uh, in Times Square. Uh, and they also go to uh, a Sweet 16 for a young lady named Josephine. This is called Josephine's Sweet 16. 
By the time we got to Josephine's Sweet 16, there were cheese doodle fingers everywhere. Fat Phil was already deep into his fake pachanga. Skaniki, Angel, and Dre set up a snapshot by the cake tears. Josephine's eyes were lit like strobes and glitter, her silver dress hardly fitter, and because Angel was still tripping, he saw sequin in everything, quinine in the ice cream, a fork and spoon sand off. He even saw his fate in a rack of plastic champagne glasses, bubbles big as balloons released into the sky all at once. Come on, bro, you can't mess with a man who's wearing a tuxedo, he said. Cubes of cheddar and guayaba sat like Zen masters on the spheres of rich crackers. Josephine's brother kept adjusting his top hat because he had to give away his sister, told us to stay by the round table just in case she tried to roll out and get reborn all of a sudden. Josephine graced her gold-plated throne. Her reinvention was imminent. Put on your cake face, Angel said. What we thought we heard Skinicki say was, if Sekmus created the desert with a breath, then Shorty Bung Bung split the Atlantic to death. Party over here, party over there, and this right you get to take with you. The grown-ups spent most of their free time in the bathroom, and whenever the DJ played a Gran Combo, we all sighed and dipped to the staircase to make out, roll up, or add up. Little Joe, Josephine's uncle, tried to call us out on our stagnancy. Non-disciplined knuckleheads, he'd say, and as a way of offering evidence, he'd point to Fat Phil, and there was Fat Phil crashing into the VIP table. Almost made Josephine's abuelita spill her rum, until abuelita threw him a life-saving turn and spun Fat Phil back into his seat. There's that moment right when the flashbulb flashed on Josephine's smile, where your sense of lottery and random tries to reason with you, and yet there's just enough chance to survive more than one fresh hell and emerge without taking shorts. This piece is called You Lose Something Every Day. And by this point in the book, um, the, the young men have experienced um, loss. You lose something every day. It was Dre who once said, you lose something every day. Your mind on the way to the store, the floor on the way to your mind, the mind on the way to the clinic, your clinic on the way to one more, the mad in the way of your kind, the lyrics to your favorite song, the cure on the way to the camp, the finish on your way to the line, your nickel in the way of a dime, your short to your favorite long, the loss on the way to the fine, the skin that was yours to bear, the crown that was yours to wear, the floor you were forced to clean, the game that was yours to fair, the face that you were forced to mean. It was Dre who once said, you lose something every day. Throughout the book, there's an outfit called the Poetry Cops, and the Poetry Cops stands for uh, poetry, consolidated poetry systems, and they interrogate uh, this young man named Papo, who is like the, the poet in the crew, and who has the memory, the memory um, of that weekend. Um, and in this particular sequence, Bapo starts off and then the cops follow and so on. Bapo, you have to forget what you heard, even if you were out there when it happened. But how to stay true to what you see? I wrote what I saw in the face of what I remember. Well, who is the you? The you is you. Us, we, all of them, and the others. That's you. Let's continue. That's all. I'm just trying to build. Let's talk about voice. Okay, voice. On any Saturday night, you could find yourself running against your voice. The voice that yells, five old Teddy up is about to jump. The voice that suggests you don't go down a certain block, that you stay away from that blonde streak that you go home early, that at any moment your screams can go dry. What happens when the voice comes to stay? 
Like Baraka used to say, I can see something in the way of ourselves. That sounds like Brother Lowe. You don't know patience until you stand on the corner when shit is slow. Brother Lowe was on some planet rock stuff. He made sure that we enlisted in the fight for freedom, not now, but right now. This poem is called To Be Down, uh, and it's kind of an initiation poem, uh, and it takes place toward the end um, of the book. Who among us believed in the great scheme of life and still had enough stage presence to carry the night? To be down, you had to start blindfolded at the top. To be down by law, you die for one or you die for all. One building, 12 stories of surprise confrontation, a portrait in mean, take as many steps to the end as needed. Jet down the stairs, all the way to the lobby, every odd number floor was a place to breathe right quick. No more than two people on any floor could attack. A death blow might jump out of every door. If that was your hobby for real, you were good. No fire extinguishers, no belts, no sticks, no tricks, no rallies against your inborn dignity. If you reached the stop standing, if you reached the stoop standing up, you were down. You could cry, but you had to cry standing up. And by no means would you allow yourself to become a cliche, broke at the end. There's a golden mean that loves with a weak hand. It's part of our disembodied shade and studies your face when you land on the come up. Some might call it a thirst for manhood. Quick to reach, quick to teach. When you only have one chance, it's never been about being fair. What did it mean to be yourself, to practice staying alive, to cry for those of us who couldn't hit back? I'll end with a with a poem called "That's My Heart" right there, which was a common phrase uh, that we used to say uh, we loved someone. That's my heart right there. We used to say, "That's my heart right there," as if to say, "Don't mess with her right there," as if don't even play. That's a part of me right there. In other words, okay, okay, that's the start of me right there. As if come that day, that's the end of me right there. As if push come to shove, I would fend for her right there. As if come what may, I would lie for her right there. As if come love to pay, I would die for that right there. Peace. Uh, have a beautiful day.